So you'll have another you'll have another opportunity if you haven't already gathered elements. But just to sort of plant that seed that you'll need something to drink and eat so that you can participate with us. Um, and we're so happy you're here on this first Sunday of Advent. Uh, as a reminder, we're recording the service, but we will pause so that your uh, prayer requests are confidential and not recorded. So take a moment to settle in your seat. Feel the ground beneath you as we are blessed with a prelude that was recorded by Kyoko called Night. Thank you for that, Kyoko. Um, a, a few, two operational matters. The first is I'm, I'm gonna be seeking two volunteers to uh, read our opening sentences for us. So think about whether you're interested in doing that. Um, and then as a reminder, because it's the first Sunday in Advent, um, if you have an Advent wreath or a candle of any kind, and a lighting elements, we are going to be using that shortly. So um, feel free to uh, grab that as well. Um, and I'm seeing in chat that Whitney is um, volunteering to be a reader. Thank you so much. And um, I'll have you read the part of leader. And then we need somebody to read the part of the people. I see Sandy's hand. Uh, thank you both so much. We'll get you unmuted and please um, feel free to join them at home and read the people part aloud along with them. Can one be homesick for something they've never known? We are homesick for a just world, for peace like rivers, for the end of suffering 
Yes, we are homesick. For joy that is contagious, for nations that feel like neighbors, for hospitals that run empty. We are homesick for the world God envisions. We are homesick, but we are on our way. God is here. God is still creating. We open ourselves to the spirit of God. Amen. And thank you both so much for leading us in those opening sentences. They're so beautiful. Um, I encourage you to go back and um, sit with those a little longer. Um, after our opening song, uh, that's when we will do our Advent candle lighting and reading. So um, if you want to grab a candle while Linda leads us in, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, um, and you'll notice the words have been adapted by Linda as well. Thanks, Priscilla. I'm just imagining uh, singing on what I believe this morning uh, we're coming from three different continents, um, uh, which is very exciting. So imagining us kind of singing this together from three different parts of the world is very exciting. Um, some of you have either uh, danced to this in the sanctuary or seen it done. So I encourage you, um, if there are movements that are either familiar to you that you remember, or you just wanna make with your arms, we often lift our arms up um, led by, um, by dancers, uh, typically in the sanctuary when the candles are brought in. So I know I'm imagining that moment and invite you to move your body in ways that make sense for you. Yeah. And also if you're relatively new to us, what we do during Advent is we build on this song each week. So today we begin with these two verses. O come, O come, Emmanuel, our hearts long for an end to this live hell. We mourn for those in exile here, and notice all the ways that God appears. Rejoice! Rejoice, Emmanuel. God's with us in the places where we dwell. Oh, come, oh, wisdom from within. We're weary, and it's so hard to begin. But here, collective knowledge shows and teaches us the way to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. God with us in the places where we go. Thank you, Linda. Okay, a few reminders, because we had some people just join us. We're so glad that they're here. Um, today is communion. Feel free to grab something to eat as bread and something to drink um, as our wine for communion that's coming up shortly. And it is um, the first Sunday in Advent. Oh, yeah. Scroll down. Okay. I can't do that. So we will be lighting our wreath or candle. If you have one, um, that will be helpful. And we are really excited because um, our readers this morning um, are Emma Trays and Eli Critch. And so we're so excited. Um, I'm not sure if the parts have been assigned. I bet they have. Um, yes, it looks like I'm seeing Laura nod her head. So I think... Um, we know who's doing which piece. And is Emma with us as well? I think she is. Um, we look forward to your leadership. Um, the, the microphone is oh, yours. Yeah. 
We hope for a world where all are fed. We hope for a world with more bridges than walls. We hope for a world with wide open doors. We hope for a world with con con continuous laughter. We hope for a world where trees grow tall and creeks run clean. We hope for a world where all people feel at home in their bodies and in the church and the physical homes. We hope for that world. We long for that world. We are homesick for that world. So today we light the candle of hope, for hope keeps our hearts alive as we wait. May this light be a reminder that the wait is always worth it. We are close to home. May we carry hope with us. Amen. Amen. What, what gives us hope this morning is the two of you and all the kids who are um, part of our community and leading the charge. You really do make us feel hopeful. At this time, I invite you, if you have a candle, to light the candle of hope. Some of you may have um, had a candle delivered by a mysterious angel or elf at your door. Um, we hope that you may have received one and there may be some that are still being delivered and mailed. Thank you both once again. Take a moment to notice how you're feeling. Ponder how you're feeling about hope on this morning. And we will share a few uh, announcements from our community. A special thank to our uh, worship team. Uh, Faith is uh, behind the curtains being our tech lead and we so appreciate her in that role. Um, and then Joe and Jack are our greeters. Uh, we thank everyone who uh, makes today and other Sundays possible. If you are feeling particularly thankful in this season, we invite you to make a special Thanksgiving offering. Um, there are envelopes that, may, that are making their way to you and you can also give online. Um, so that would be very appreciated. Our Sci-Fi Book Club is back. Um, and they're discussing the book, The Prey of Gods. Um, this Tuesday at 7 p.m. is when that discussion will be there. Um, feel free to join whether you've read the whole book, part of the book, or none of the book. They would be happy to have you. Um, way out overdue Wednesdays, uh, Power is having an action in Harrisburg on Wednesday, December 1st, uh, to call for an end to racial profiling in our schools. Um, and to demand full and fair educational funding. Um, please let us know if you're going and if you're interested in traveling and carpooling together, you can reach out to KIPP. The trustees are meeting this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Um, that's the group entrusted with maintaining our property, such an important role. If you'd like to know more about their work, uh, the meeting is open for you to sit in on. This Saturday, the trustees are having a work party light um, from nine to 12. They're doing some indoor projects and you are invited to join them and help out as we get um, one step closer to being back in the building. It's very exciting. Hybrid Christmas Eve services um, are going to happen. Um, so there will be two services. Um, and they will be both in person and uh, online. I'm not sure if they're both Zoom, um, but um, the services are at 4.30 and six. There will be a 50 person limit and there is a registration form where you can sign up. So please make your plans if you're able to join us locally. And um, we will also be excited for everyone to join virtually who's further away. Rainbow Connection um, is on hiatus until January, so you'll hear more then. 
Um, if you have questions or comments or suggestions uh, for our church leadership, uh, feel free to send an email um, to church council or to uh, reach out to Michelle or Eli. We also have a dedicated email for prayer requests, prayers at chestnuthillunited.org if you would like the pastors to be praying for you in an ongoing way. It's our, that time when we um, check in with kids. Um, so I'm gonna start off by just seeing if there's any kids who want to share anything um, today. Oh, I see a hand up in the Critch household. Um, can we um, help unmute them? Mm -hmm. um today we're getting our tree <gasps> that's so exciting do you get a real tree yes and is it going to be small medium or large probably large and skinny <laughs> that's that's your style yeah or or usually um it's either a um small and fat or tall and skinny oh i i am a short and fat person myself that's my preference but but i'm not mad at the tall and skinny eli so mm -hmm. um i can't wait maybe um is there is it placed in a place where if you're online next time we might be able to see it in the background mm -hmm. over there okay, okay. Sure. We're, we're gonna try we're gonna try that yeah, it's, it's somewhere gonna, over there we're going to check in with you on a future yeah. Sunday to see if you want to show us your tree. Okay. Great, 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 great. Cool. Anybody cool. else want to want to check in? Any other kids? I just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Well, um, today, uh, as we talked about, it's the first. Actually, sorry, Priscilla, there is. Oh, yes. yay. I go. see a hand in the Tice family and some curls. Um, uh, we're going to unmute you. I would love to hear. Hi. Um, we, um, Get close to the camera, please. Um, can thanks. Um, giving one lot to the, um, our cabin. Did, did you go to a cabin for Thanksgiving? Yeah. <gasps> That's so much fun. And I have another question. Did you eat any turkey? No, but my brothers and sisters did. <laughs> okay. What was your favorite food? Um, probably the applesauce. Yum. I love it. Can you say hi to everybody? <laughs> Hey, was that Josiah's hand? Yeah. Oh, that's so <laughs> exciting. <laughs> we are to pack up the um, bags, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, were you guys part of the elves that delivered bags? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that's so exciting. Thank you for being of service. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. I, I see Juniper. Juniper, do you want to say anything? Okay. We had a Christmas tree yesterday. That's so exciting. Did you get a tall, skinny one or a short, fat one? We oh, got we got a, um, a tall, fat one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you broke the mole. You got a whole different one. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So? Okay. That's very exciting. Thank you for no. sharing that with us. Do you want to see it? <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. We would love to see it. All right. Let's take it real quick until we have a little bit. Here. See it? <gasps> oh, and colored lights. I forgot to ask about people's preferences for white lights or the colors. That is short. That is tall and fat. <laughs> we love it. Juniper, thank you so much for sharing that with us. And I see your Advent wreath too. That's so exciting. 
So since today is Advent, um, we just uh, want to, you know, that's kind of a funny word. Not everybody knows what it means. Even some grownups don't know what it means. So we just want to um, just remind us that Ed Advent just means the time when we prepare for Christmas and the promise that um, God would send a, a savior um, to be born into the world. Um, and so it's the four Sundays leading up to Christmas. And we invite you to think about what you do to prepare for that. It sounds like some people get Christmas trees and decorate them. Some people do acts of service and deliver bags to church members. Um, a lot of us um, gather together with family, we sing, we pray, we light Advent candles. And so we just ask you to think about the preparations that you make as we um, celebrate this wonderful holiday together that is um, um, in many ways the center of our faith. So thank you all for sharing our time with children with us. And good morning. I'm Kip, uh, associate pastor. Oops, um, our time with children slide can go away, but we, uh, I am uh, going to introduce our first reading, which is not a reading this week. Our first reading will be a video uh, that, that goes along with the Advent theme we're working with this, uh, this year's Advent um, called Close to Home. Uh, kind of in, envisioning the home, uh, as we heard in our in our Advent wreath reading that uh, that Emma and Eli did for us, and moving towards the home of this world as God envisions it, and we can hope to live into it. Um, so this is a video that highlights some of the themes that and some of the images that we'll get throughout this Advent. Um, so the group is called Barnaby Bright, and we'll, we can sit with their video here. I can't describe the way I've been feeling Everything all turned around inside my head Longing Find some magical sign A key to my deepest desire The home that my body is left I've waited all my victories Despite the love it leaves to no avail I've tried to find my voice Like Sakura Inside your own 
comes the flood, the joy that sets us free. How are we ever alone? Wherever you are, we are Thank you, Faye. Um, so that leads us to our assigned Bible reading for the morning, which uh, is always a curveball to start Advent because this doesn't sound like Christmas at all. Um, today, the gospel reading comes from near the end of the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 36. And this is Jesus speaking to uh, his followers about troubling things uh, when it feels like the world is going to end. Signs will appear in the sun, the moon, and the stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish, distraught at the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the earth. The powers in the heavens will be shaken. After that, people will see the child of humanity coming on a cloud with great power and glory. When these things begin to happen, stand up straight and raise your heads because your redemption is near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree or any other tree. You see when they're budding and know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things happening, know that the reign of God is near. The truth is, this generation will not pass away until all this takes place. The heavens and the earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on your guard, lest your spirits become bloated with indulgence, drunkenness, and worldly cares. That day will suddenly close in on you like a trap. It will come upon all who dwell on the face of the earth, so be on your watch. Pray constantly for the strength to escape whatever comes and to stand secure before the child of humanity. This is the Bible reading. I'm at, I'm at that time of the semester, every semester in my introduction to religious studies class as we get towards the end of the semester where we are now. And I know my students will be stressing out about everything they have coming due, not only in my class, but all their other classes. I try to give them a little breather. It's movie time. And I try to be democratic about it. I give them a few options and we watch the majority choice. I always hope that they will choose the one about a subculture of Muslim punk rock musicians because I find that one infinitely more interesting than what they always choose, which is a documentary called Hell House. It's about an Assemblies of God congregation in Texas, somewhere outside Dallas, whose youth group puts on an elaborate haunted house style production every year around Halloween except that each of the scare rooms involves a scenario drawn from real life instead of from slasher flicks. Each room involves at least one reenacted death and they're generally horrifying, not so much because of the production values, but because of the theology and the politics behind them. And because the youth group's adult leaders have made the calculated choice to court controversy in their attempt to scare people to Jesus. 
Every scene is played out within the framework of a single boring question. If you died today, would you go to heaven or to hell? The very clear answer, as far as the church folks are concerned, is that if death catches you unawares and you've been living in ways that offend what I'll call moral prude Jesus, your suffering will know no end. Aside from the occasional student in my class who professes to agree with the message but find the presentation distasteful, most of them are some mix of bewildered and amused. I tell them they made their choice and now they have to live with the consequences, but I think the irony is lost on most of them. I'm most fascinated by the closing montage. The producers string together snippets of monologues from various participants talking about their motivations for being part of the production. As a bit of filmmaking and scholarship, I appreciate how they just let the folks speak for themselves and let the viewers come to some conclusions. But in this montage, one of the young women who doesn't look at all traumatized says, the world is the worst that it has ever been. It's an ugly, evil world. And that's a scary thing. But at the same time, it's a good thing because it means that Jesus is close to coming. That's a whole lot to unpack right there. The world is terrible, but that's kind of a good thing because it means we'll be plucked out of it. Declaring that the world is the worst it's ever been is actually a time-honored tradition across a lot of religious practices. So is the hope of being plucked out of the trouble. The church, the church folks in the film, they weren't the first people to interpret the apocalyptic passages of the Bible this way. Whole denominations have come into existence based on the conviction that the world is terrible and is about to end. Of course, the timeline never seems to quite work out. Even in the texts themselves, this passage from Luke has Jesus saying that the generation of his listeners wouldn't pass away before all the things happened. But it wasn't even written down until a generation afterward. The young woman in the film thought the world was the worst it's ever been. And that film is 20 years old already. One might argue that the world has actually gotten worse still, thanks in no small part to the kinds of politics and political decisions driven by some folks with apocalyptic mindsets. White supremacy is fashionable to wear openly. Climate change continues with, more, with little more than promises standing in its way. Guns and gun violence proliferate. Our democracy is increasingly threadbare. And we're living a pandemic that is being prolonged because parts of the world can't get vaccinated and folks here won't. So happy Advent, y'all. Because as we sometimes like to say here, we take the Bible seriously, but not literally. And because we're generally not the type of church that is all that prone to rapture thinking, because we don't, most of us, imagine that God is going to pluck us up from out of a troubled world. There's a temptation to let cynicism and hopelessness take over. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but I'll keep going in case it's not just for myself. Every year, Advent does this unsettling and paradoxical thing. It arrives in the Northern Hemisphere, at least, as the days are getting shorter, the nights are getting longer, and the weather's getting colder. It starts us off with readings that are troubling and disorienting, apocalyptic readings like this one, every first Sunday of Advent. And at the very same time we're asked to sit with gospel readings about trouble increasing, we're also asked to meditate on the theme of hope. Hey, Jesus said in the reading that things are going to get weirder and scarier and worse. Let's light the candle of hope. It is lit there. No wonder some people want to think of salvation as being 
plucked out of the trouble. But even if we were inclined to take this confusing and unsettling passage literally, there are a few things we could notice about it, starting with its mixed message. Jesus said to pray for escape, but he said it to people who didn't and wouldn't escape, because he also said that the trouble will reach everyone. He said there's no real getting around the fact of suffering. So this is really more about endurance than escape. Even that confoundingly strange image of the child of humanity or the human one descending on a cloud, they're riding into the trouble, not away from it. Salvation is not a way out. It's a way through. The task of Advent is not to reject the world. Even as he talked about devastation and struggle and suffering, Jesus looked to the world itself for guidance, the overpowering awe of the ocean, the steady growing cycles of the fig tree and the other trees, which come back again and again and again. What is hope when the world is in trouble? Hope lies in being rooted to earth and grounded in community. Here's some contemporary Advent wisdom for us from one of our congregational patron saints. It's maybe a little less confusing than the Bible and a little less troubling. Mary Oliver's poem, When Death Comes, looks to the fact of our fragility and our finitude and finds in it inspiration. Where apocalyptic doomsayers scream, the end is coming, the end is coming, Mary Oliver says, the end is always with us. It will get here in its time. It will get here for each of us and for all of us. So let it shape your present. There's a very biblical hope that sounds gently here. The hope of finding God, of finding life in every moment. When death comes. When death comes, like the hungry bear in autumn, when death comes and takes all the bright coins from his purse to buy me and snaps the purse shut. When death comes like the measle pox, when death comes like an iceberg between the shoulder blades. I want to step through the door full of curiosity, wondering what is it going to be like that cottage of darkness. And therefore I look upon everything as a brotherhood and a sisterhood. And I look upon time as no more than an idea, and I consider eternity as another possibility. And I think of each life as a flower, as common as a field daisy, and as singular, and each name a comfortable music in the mouth, tending as all music does toward silence, and each body a lion of courage and something precious to the earth. When it's over, I want to say, all my life I was a bride married to amazement. I was the bridegroom taking the world into my arms. When it's over, I don't want to wonder if I have made of my life something particular and real. I don't want to find myself sighing and frightened or full of argument. I don't want to end up simply having visited this world. Mary Oliver. And we are more than visitors. In pleasure, in sorrow, in shared pain, in shared struggle, in shared triumph. We are more than visitors. We are a home for God in this world. This is God's good news. Amen. Amen. At this time, you are each invited to the communion table, our sacred family meal. We ask that you gather elements that can serve as bread and wine as we recall the ongoing life and spirit of Jesus Christ. We will bring up the slides
it's that time we when we continue our worship through our giving. Um, we remind you that all of our ministries do require uh, funding to keep us going so that we can continue to um, do things like create care packages to um, just remind people how much we love them um, and um, the ways that we want to give in the wider world in order to um, our, for our ministry to reach outside of our own um, community. The different ways that you can give are listed on the screen. Um, uh, our online system is uh, realm.org. The uh, website is there or the, the link is there. You can also give by text or you can mail checks. Um, and the ways that you can do that are posted in the chat. We thank you for your gifts, for your ongoing commitment to sustain this community. For our spotlight on generosity, we've mentioned several times, and, and here's a, a picture of, um, well, first of all, just being back in the sanctuary for anything um, is such a, a delight, and it, it feels um, pretty emotional for me. So um, it was great to be in that space and to be under the leadership of Terry and Rachel, who did so much to make our Advent care packages happen. Uh, and there were plenty of people who showed up. It was a, it, it's, um, such a sign of growth um, when you put out a call for volunteers and people just show up. So we thank you to all of our bag assemblers, um, Terry, Rachel, myself, Sandy, Kate, Molly, Debbie, Kip, we're all there being um, busy bees, uh, filling those bags. And then Delivering bags is particularly, um, it's quite quite a task. And so we thank everybody who was able to do that. Um, Terry and Rachel, Debbie, Kate, Molly, Sandy, Francesca, Cindy, Marissa, and family, um, Marianne, Leslie, and myself. We're so grateful that we were able to come together in this way and just show um, a small amount of gratitude that we might prepare people for the Advent season. With the, the USPS should be on there too, still doing their part in delivery. Yes, thank you. Um, at this time, we will have our closing song uh, led by Linda. Thank you, Linda. Thanks, Priscilla. These are uh, alternate words um, from part of our Advent theme package uh, to the tune of Lo, How a Rose They're Blooming. See fig tree leaves now sprouting, soon summer comes again. Creation groans in labor for God's reign to begin. We wait with faded breath, homesick for God's true kingdom. Age without age or death. Sun, moon, and stars above us speak of God's promised day to make space for our new home. This world must pass away. When we are filled with dread, the words of Christ uphold us. Arise and raise your head. I'm about to send you off with a blessing. As a reminder, if you're able to stick around and linger and chat, we would love to um, see you and hear from you. As you go from this place, may your hope lie in salvation as a way through. May your end shape your presence and in the midst of pleasure and sorrow, may you endure. Amen. If you don't already have it on gallery view, change your settings. Good to see everyone.
Hi, everybody. Hey, everyone. Thank you for being here. Good to see Thank you, Jimmy. Jimmy. Oh, nice to see you both. Everyone. <laughs> Hi, Juniper. Hi. Bye. <laughs> Bye and bye. 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 God bless you. Bye. bye. Glad you all were together. Bye. Bye, Juniper. Bye. Wave again, Mom. Bye. Thanks. Good to uh, see you, Marlene. <laughs> and Chris. Thanks, Kip bye. and Priscilla and Linda. That was beautiful to today. You, Dave. Thanks, Ooh. Dave. Beautiful. Uplifting. Thank you all. Yeah. Happy Advent. Happy, Happy Advent. Advent everyone. Happy Advent. Bye-bye. 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 Take care. Hi, everybody. We miss you so much. I I'm know. So it's so good to see the kids. Oh. Yeah, we miss you guys so much. I've been working so much on Sundays now. I finally had a Sunday off. So, you know, Yay. it's not, not purposeful. So, but we miss you guys so, so much. Thanks for spending it with us, Marissa. Mm -hmm. Hi, Marjorie and Art and Marianne.